Well, economic forecasts hardly get sunnier than the $1.4 billion surplus predicted for the next state budget. Now, coming off the pandemic recession, it's not the kind of rapid rebound we're used to in New Mexico. So here to talk through the implications is our Line Opinion panel. We welcome a new face to our virtual group this week. It's Rebecca Latham. She's the former head of the New Mexico Tourism Department under Governor Susana Martinez. But she's currently CEO of the Girl Scouts of New Mexico. Thanks for joining us, Rebecca. Attorney and public safety expert Edmund Perea is back with us this week. Good to see you as always, Ed. And one of our line regulars, attorney Sophie Martin, returns as well. And Sophie, I'll start with you. Uh, sure. State economists say this is, yes, oil and gas revenue they're projecting, but they're also seeing much higher than normal consumer spending. It's very interesting to me. Simple question, are either of those things sustainable? Well, I mean, the, the question of oil and gas and whether that's sustainable in mm -hmm. New Mexico, we've seen those fluctuations over the years. Mm -hmm. We, you know, our attempts to prognosticate over that have have uh, seldom gone well. But, you know, we it's 40 something percent of our of our uh, revenues each year is, is what we usually see with oil and gas. Right. And um, and so. I guess lucky for us this time. I, I'm frankly, you know, we've we've talked about that a lot, but I am concerned about the projections um, based on tax revenue and consumer spending here in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk a little bit later in the show about some changes that might uh, they're expected to occur in those areas. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm I I really I I am concerned because. It does sound like a lot of that comes from federal revenues that our locals are spending here, mm -hmm. uh, and they, those might not continue. We'll, you know, we'll see as COVID continues whether That's that money point, continues yeah. to. Continue. Yeah, uh, you know, Rebecca, oil prices, government stimulus—they're all inherently, like Sophie mentioned, unstable sources of income. They go up, they go down, but aren't aren't they? But here's the question: Are there fundamental changes to the New Mexico economy that we might be missing here? You know, I, I think overall, uh, first of all, let me say I'm just stoked. I'm stoked as just like everybody else, that there's more money in the future. Mm -hmm. You know, like who doesn't like finding a 20 in your pocket that you forgot that was there? <laughs> New unexpected money is great. This, I, is, like I a, this do, is like a hundred dollar bill in your pocket uh, by New Mexico it's like standards, right? Yahtzee, like what are we going to do with it? Are we mm -hmm. going to invest it or are we taking it to the casino? Like what's the plan here? And I think that's where I'm just a little bit, I'm hesitant. I'm, hap I'm hesitant about what happens next. And I'm also making this face with every elected official who's taking credit for it, because we've seen recently numerous elected officials coming out and saying like, heck, yeah, we've got one point four billion extra dollars as a result of sound, fi sound fiscal policy. Right. But does it sound like sound fiscal policy to invest one hundred thousand dollars to recruit one new state police officer? Because that's what the proposal that the governor has put together, her proposal to invest one hundred million dollars to hire 1,000 new officers boiled down to. And we are indeed in a crime crisis, but uh, we need more law enforcement. Throwing money, that kind of money around with $1.4 billion is not gonna solve the issues that is, that is causing our current officers to retire or just walk away entirely. Mm. Now, you know, when it let, comes let, let down to- Let me ask you to, this. I do wanna come back and handle that um, a bit separately, the law enforcement side, because that's kind of interesting. And I want you to kind of, Take your time on that too. Let me uh, swing to Ed here real quick. I, I wanna point out, Ed, that this doesn't include money skimmed off the top, so to speak, an estimated one and a half billion dollars into the rainy day funds. So what's the most prudent approach here? Spend it all in on like one-time projects like infrastructure or make in incremental program changes, pay raises. There's a lot of things as Rebecca was hinting at here that we can do with this money. What, what's the best way in your view? Well, whenever I hear the term, and I've heard it over and over again with this announcement, is that the government, the state is flush with cash. Mm -hmm. It raises a lot of red flags because whenever you see this abundance of, of new money, there's always this tendency to go out and maybe enjoy it a little more than you should. Right. I think one of the most important <laughs> things we can do now, now that we have this flush of funds, is we need some oversight we need you know whatever the, the organization is within the government to take a close look at how this money is spent mm -hmm. and not treat this money as as extra money to do a lot of a lot of a lot of fun stuff uh you know exorbitant pay raises or things of, or things of that sort i think we need to keep, keep the lid on certain things i think there really has to be a priority 
uh, and the priorities really need to be those things that maybe we've we've you know overlooked in the past or those that are have much greater needs such as infrastructure we know that we have real issues with the roads in new mexico and we just need to put certain things on top of the list and be very careful with reoccurring expenses i think you know we need to look at this address as many one-time expenses as we can off the top and then maybe start to look a little more at some of the reoccurring expenses. But we need to be very careful because, as it's already been mentioned uh, by Sophie and Rebecca, you know, this is, you know, it, it has its ups and downs. And, uh, you know, we need to be just fiscally aware of that and, mm -hmm. and uh, not spend like a, you know, to, to use a, a term like a drunken sailor. Right. We have a, a few right. extra dollars. That's a good They're a landlocked there. state. You know that, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking. Hey, Sophie, let me ask you this. Let's widen the lens a little bit, maybe. Is it really yeah. the state's job to address crime issues and what basically seems to be Albuquerque? Uh, you know, this governor has mm -hmm. uh, made efforts in that direction by uh, utilizing the state police. So, I mean, to, to to be clear, I don't think that I don't think that Rebecca was unclear in this, but mm -hmm. but this is she's not talking about putting money toward the Albuquerque Police Department. She's talking about beefing up the state police and then using some of that uh, resource, the that that opportunity to help out in Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think though that this is a it's an interesting time for us because it has been a really horrible year and a half. Um, I think state employees, we want to we want to try to keep state employees working. Mm -hmm. um, and traditionally, we've not been great about giving raises for our public servants. Um, I personally sort of as a as a rule of thumb, I'd like to see money spent in the state by folks who are then going to turn around and spend it with someone who's going to turn around and spend it mm. in the state and infrastructure mm -hmm. programs can be certainly can be like that mm -hmm. um, where we see the benefit of the of the work and then we also see the benefit of the money circulating within our economy uh, and my hope is again just as a rule of thumb that that is a priority for this government what well, the priorities this is going to be a tough one let me go back to one of your original points rebecca and that is law enforcement and crime issues here uh, you took note of the governor's plan for $100 million of the surplus to go towards that. And you mentioned a second ago that might be, when you're talking about over a billion dollars, kind of a drop in the bucket. What would you like to see for a, for a number? Do you have a back of the envelope number personally that you'd like to see spent on law enforcement here? I think we need to address the issues that are currently plaguing law enforcement in our state before mm -hmm. we start to just say, like, let's just throw more money at it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you would be hard pressed to find another New Mexican who supports law enforcement as much as I do. I love and appreciate every single one of our officers so much. Uh, but uh, again, what we're seeing at, at the Albuquerque level, we've seen a mayor who's told us over and over again, like, we're going to hire, hire more police, hire more police, mm -hmm. we're going to hire more police. Mm -hmm. We're budgeted for more police. We were budgeted for more than poli more police at the beginning of the administration prior to a gross receipts and tax increase to hire more police. We're still not able to hire more police. So clearly money is not the issue. Mm -hmm. At the end of the year, when those funds have not been fully expended on more police, where do they go? They go somewhere else. They don't go where they were originally supposed to go to hire more police. So mm -hmm. to me, it just feels like this definition of insanity. We just keep doing the same thing and saying we're gonna do more and it's gonna fix the crime crisis. It is. I, I fully support our our state police. I support and appreciate our governor taking taking some uh, some bold steps to say like that she wants to overhaul the criminal justice system in New Mexico. That has to be done before we can rely on more police to fix the problem. And mm -hmm. when I did that math, you know, a hundred thousand dollar investment for uh, for each officer. It's not just like that's just not salaries. I know that, but that's that's an insane amount of money. For, it, without addressing the, the issues, you know, before that. So yeah. I just think we got a lot of work to do. Let me bring Ed on, on this one, too, about bail reform. Interesting, we've had that conversation here at the, at the table, so to speak, <laughs> before Ed. But bail reform is certainly something that would have to be a, a constitutional amendment. In, 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 but I, I guess in the context of this, with all this money, is this money enough to kick forward all the things that Rebecca and Sophie have been talking about here? Because it's a multi-pronged problem. We haven't even talked about the lack of money on the defense side of the issue. Folks have been screaming for money on that side of the deal here for a long time. So what's the deal here with bail reform? Do we need to get after that first before we can get after these other crime problems as well? Well, I, I think there are just so many multiple component parts to this to this entire issue. Yeah. And bail reform clearly is one of them. I, I think there was 
uh, there was this idea uh, and, and this goal for for passing this this, this uh, bail reform, uh, and now it needs to be tweaked. I think we're realizing that that it's not perfect, and that there are some things that need to be worked out. I think some modifications that, that need to be made. Now that being said, I'm not so sure. Based upon the data that I've seen, is that this bail reform, this constitutional amendment that was, was recently passed is really the problem. Whenever we look at the crime crisis, we need to identify the problem. A lot of people are pointing out as this bail reform as the problem. But if you talk to others on the other side and you look at the numbers, this bail reform isn't, isn't a major causal factor to, to the crime that we have, but it doesn't say that we can't address the issue and make it and make it a little better. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Rebecca and, and Sophie just are, are right on the point when it comes to uh, to how we spend money and we can't throw money at problems. And my concern always is let's put a million dollars out there for a thousand more officers. And there's so much more to that. You know, as Rebecca mentioned earlier, like you need to make the career attractive. And part of the problem is we don't have a, as many individuals as we used to wanting to be police officers. And so we need point. to address some of those things. I don't know that money is, is, is the answer. That's a point. In itself. Sophie, real quick, I, I'm just super curious. Uh, politically, the next session is going to be the governor's last big whack at this uh, policy going into the reelection. Is it going to be all crime and crime stuff? I mean, is that which, what we should expect? You know, just, you know, taking a step back and, and speaking from more of the, since you brought up the upcoming elections, right? Mm -hmm. um, crime has not traditionally been the topic that Democrats have sought to run under. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it is seen as a little bit of an Achilles heel. So to the extent that the governor, it seems to me, can try to address that Achilles heel, great. But but my suspicion is that her stronger case is for um, for programs that help to lift up New Mexicans mm -hmm. um, as opposed to, I mean, she's, I don't think she's going to be able to just ignore it. I can't imagine she would, but, but I think she's going to want to try to pivot to something more positive. And this money maybe gives her an opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. Interesting point there. We're out of time, but we're back in a few minutes to talk about the end of the federal unemployment boosts.